Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the chess.com rapid rating climb. Let's get straight into it. I'm feeling really fired up for this one as we get closer to 1900 ELO. I want to be getting at least above 2000 because I think that's realistically where I should be. And we have the black pieces against E4. You know what I'm going to play. C6. Our opponent is significantly lower rated than us. It's the same as last game. We actually had a Caro last game against a significant, yeah, yeah, fairly significantly lower rated opponent. And we'll play the main line. Okay. And here we take. We expect knight takes. Bishop c4, I think, is a move, like a gambit line. But here we can play knight f6 and trade like this. But I prefer the Karpov line, which is what we played last time starts with knight d7 so after knight to f6 and knight takes you don't have to take with the e-pawn and double the pawns but you can take back with the d7 knight self-explanatory <clears throat> if you haven't watched the previous episodes the playlist will be linked below or at least it should be so you can check out the previous episodes some of which are very good and okay knight f3 let's continue with the plan and I've opted for playing 15 minute games now rather than playing 10 minute games as we did at the start because I feel like I can actually, I, I have more time to explain what I'm thinking and just go off on like random tangents, which I assume is useful for you guys. Otherwise, I don't think I'd be getting views, which for some reason I am. So thank you very much. So, <clears throat> Night G5, I believe, is a line of the alien gambit so if i go h6 i think our opponent is going to take and after king takes even though we get a knight for a pawn our opponent has a ridiculous amount of play and so what i have started doing against this is completely ignoring it just going e6 developing Maybe, we can maybe even castle queenside just to avoid anything weird. But we could also go something like bishop to d6 and queen e7 to defend the f7 pawn. The problem is, when if we ever play h6, then knight takes... Knight can't take f8. Knight f7, king f7. <clears throat> There's massive gaps on the light squares because our h pawn no longer defends g6. And our f-pawn obviously doesn't because he's going to take it. So I think this is a very practical way to play against the alien gambit, in my opinion. Now the computer will criticise it and say, yo, just play h6. And in the post-game analysis, when we do that, the computer will be just shouting at me every single move to play h6. But I'm not going to do it. Because whilst objectively it might be the best move... My opponent, realistically, is very well booked up, and he knows all the ideas in the Alien Gambit, and I don't. So playing h6 would kind of just be suicide. So, we're just going to develop. We're going to go for our plan of bishop d6, queen e7. And then I think h6 is playable, because after knight takes f7, we have queen takes f7. Eh? Am I missing something? What? Okay, well we have to take it obviously. So let's just take it and then think. Which by the way is a good piece of advice. Because we have no choice but to take the um but to take the knight. So we might as well just take it, get it over with, and then think about the consequences. <clears throat> But I thought the whole point of the alien gambit was to induce h6 to weaken the g6 square. This doesn't do anything, because even if a knight gives a check on g5, we always have the e7 square. Now if we go back to f8, then he'll be able to take on e6 with check. Now we just need to defend this, and I think knight f8 does the job. We could even go knight b6 to open up the bishop's defense, but I think knight f8 is incredibly solid. Although, 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 we could go rook to e8 first, because knight f8 blocks the rook's development. So if we go rook e8, knight g5, mm. 
me think. Then if we drop back. So rookie eight. Rookie eight. Come on, arrows, please. Please, please, please. <laughs> okay. Rook on e8. Knight goes to g5, we check. Problem is king e7 no longer works. If we put the king on g8, then knight takes e6 is a problem. So, I think knight b6 to open up the bishop's defense of e6 and attack his bishop. And then if knight g5 check, king e7... Maybe. This is difficult. And we've got time, so we might as well try and be as accurate as possible. <clears throat> Knight f8 is incredibly solid, but I'm just worried about the rook. I don't see how it's going to get out, because the king's going to end up on g8 after knight g5 check. Hmm. If knight b6, knight g5, king e7... Bishop b3. Um, maybe we can go rook e8. And prepare king to f8. I think I like that. I think I like that. I spent a long time on that move. But I think this is... A good way to go about the position... Now, obviously, like I said, I would have loved to play rook e8 and tuck the king away. But knight g5 check, I think, was a problem. Oh, that's a bad move. I think he had to play knight g5 first. Because if knight g5 check first, then king g8 isn't a move because e6, e6 could be taken with the knight. Or he can even just retreat the bishop and trap our rook because... Well, no, the king wouldn't have been able to go to g8. If knight to g5 immediately, we would have had to stay on e7 to guard the pawn. But now we can just go king to... Sorry, rook e8. He didn't have to worry about the attack on his bishop because he had knight g5 with check. Like, some um, danger levels, right? Like, sure, his bishop's under attack, but his king's under attack, so... I think this might make this very easy, I want to say. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't a pure alien gambit, because like I said, h6 is really the move that black plays and then white takes on f7. Because even if the king manages to escape to the king's side, in a lot of those positions when h6 has been played and then knight f7 not only does white get an extra tempo because he induces h6 but also the g6 square is really weak which again is objectively the best line by the computer but i'm not a computer so i'm not going to find all the best moves i think just king g8 makes a lot of sense we could even go king to h8 to get rid of anything Knight g5 might still be scary, but, you know, we'll deal with it. <clears throat> Knight, oh no, that just falls because of this. It would have been nice to try and block the diagonal. Hmm, we could go queen c7, because he isn't actually threatening anything. I like queen c7 because it guards the f7 square as well. So king to h8 doesn't succumb to ideas of knight g5, knight f7 check. Also lines up the pieces on h2. I mean, it's unlikely that I take it, but it's an option. Could also put this knight on d5. And if c4, could drop it back to c7 to defend e6. And the knight here blocks off the bishop's scope. I actually quite like that. And the problem is with this knight, we get done by a fork. 
But here after c4, we just drop back to c7. And if c5 is played, we can just go bishop f8. And the d4 pawn becomes very weak. Don't think I'm missing anything. Queen c7 is definitely still a move. I'm sure it is. But I don't really think the attack on the h2 pawn is all that great. Because white doesn't care about a pawn. Like, he's down a piece. So he'd happily give the h2 pawn up to get his f3 knight to g5 or even e5. Well, not e5 because then we just take it, but g5 for sure to target to target e6 and f7. So I think this is quite a practical move just to try and block off the diagonal. And now we could even try and prepare e5 at some point. B5 is also a move that I've played in a lot of these cases when C4 isn't played immediately, just to shut the idea of C4 down. And yeah, C4 makes sense. The knight could go to F4, for sure, and try and be aggressive. And like with H6, that might objectively be the best move. But I'm up a piece, so I kind of just want to secure my material and then try and trade down later on. And I think knight c7 is kind of the simplest move. I mean, it keeps things nice and easy. And d5 is definitely a move, but I think c5 just halts this pawn forever and means this diagonal will never open up again. So I'm, I'm expecting c5, and I'm going to go bishop to f8. And we're a bit cramped, but after c5, the d5 square is completely up for grabs as well. So we can probably put our f knight on d5 and again, block the diagonal off forever. And if we can do that, it should be a pretty easy conversion. Because that's where white's play tends to come from. Because our, our light squared bishop really struggles to get into the game. Because we put a pawn on e6 early on. So white's main advantage is his light squared bishop. But like I was saying before. The alien gambit should really be played after h6. Because it weakens the light squares around the king. But I haven't played that. Yeah c5. Let's just drop the bishop back as planned. And I don't really know what white's going to do. Bishop g5 is not doing anything, really. <clears throat> Again, I could play h6, but I don't really want to. If bishop g5... Hmm. It is difficult to move, for sure. It is difficult, because I'd like to put a knight on d5, but bishop g5 stops that. I could, of course, put this knight on d5, which might be a good way of going about it. I just like the knight on c7 because it holds e6, but we also have the bishop and rook defending it. And if we put the knight on d5, we blunt this bishop anyway, so we kind of take one attacker out of it. So if bishop g5, probably knight cd5 makes sense. We also open up some development square for our queen on c7 which would break the pin as well. Queen d3. Okay. I think what I'm going to do let me just let me just consider this a minute. See, we can actually take on c5. Because he can't take back because the pawn is pinned to the queen. The queen is now undefended. Do we grab a pawn? Well, I don't actually think there's any danger. Is it necessary? No. No, definitely not. But I don't see how it gets punished. If I blunder, I blunder. But I don't see how white can punish this. There's no tactics, because everything in my position is defended by the bishop. But 
my queen pins the pawn. And this queen can't move with any check. If you go queen to c4, but bishop b6. And again, this pawn is defended by three different pieces. So he'll have three attackers, I'll have three defenders. If knight g5 comes in, we can just block off the diagonal with a move like knight d5 and take two of his attackers off of the e-pawn. So, and this also weakens d4 further because it loses pawn support. I mean, the, obviously the pawn on c5 wasn't defending d4 anyway, but maybe white could have made use of the d6 square, bringing like a bishop through f4 to d6 to try and block attacks on d4 like that, which is maybe the way he should have gone. Like after, after bishop f8, maybe bishop f4 was good. Or bishop g5 like I expected. But again, I think the position is just very simple for black to play. As long as I can just keep hold of my material and not give white attacking chances. Which I don't think he has. Don't think he's really got attacking chances. So here bishop b6 makes sense to me. I think he's blocked off his own e-file with that move. And whilst he wasn't threatening to take me, I want to put a knight on d5, but that would alleviate the pin on the pawn because my queen would no longer be in contact with his queen. So bishop b6, and then I can put a knight on d5. If he tries to put a knight on e5, we can always reroute the bishop through c7 to threaten the trade, which would be nice. Again, I'd like to play king h8 at an opportune moment, but I also need a defender on f7 before I can do that. Just checking my lines. I think I want to keep... Well, no, this knight needs to defend h7. What am I, what am I on about? Yeah, phew, <laughs> that would have been a big blunder. That would have been a big blunder. Oh, wow. Okay, and obviously if takes, I can't take back with the knight because h7 hangs. So if he takes, I probably just take with the queen and just pressure d4. I mean, he, he can't take. His light squared bishop is the best part about his position as he's trying to make known with that move. <sighs> he could take with the knight. But if knight takes... If I take it, obviously queen takes, but if knight takes and I just ignore it, and knight takes, knight takes, then h7 remains defended. Is it pretty? No. But it's an option. <sighs> could take the bishop, but probably just helps white. Or he could even take the rook to go to h3. So I don't really want to help him with that. h6 is a move forcing the knight back hmm. actually no if h6 he might be able to play a move like h4 and then if takes takes he attacks the knight and if the knight moves the queen gets to h7 still tricky still tricky Play a move like queen c7. Just developing. And again, if takes, we don't take it. We wait for him to take on f6 and then we take back with the knight. But he could just retreat to g5. So h6 might have to be played. And if he plays a move like h4 or f4. So that he can try and take back with a pawn. We can just not take him. Queen g6 is kind of scary. He's looking at f7 as well. g6 is a move to block the diagonal. That might be the best course of action. In fact... Wait. Wait, do I just have knight b4? Just forking. Because if knight takes, I just take the queen. I've just done all that calculation. 
but night before he has no he doesn't have a one move threat as long as my knight maintains control of h7 night before he has no checks we're just going to win the bishop and then his attack's gone like i said that bishop is the heart of his position because we don't have a bishop to contest it. We have a light squared bishop, but it can't do anything because of the six pawn being in the way of the development, which is part of the reason the alien gambit has like long term positional compensation for going down a whole piece. But I, I think, I don't know why it took me so long to spot this idea. I kind of just tunnel vision the king side. But yeah, he doesn't he doesn't carry a threat yet. Like in the very next move there is no threat. Because the queen's under attack. And our knight defends h7. And knight takes h7, of course we don't have to take back, we can just take the queen. And here we just win the bishop. So this should be relatively easy to convert just have to try and not blunder anything which is easier said than done far easier said than done queen d5 makes a lot of sense to me if you ask me to explain it all i could say is that we stop this pawn from moving which shuts down a lot of white's play the queen just puts pressure on a lot of things controls important squares develops the queen and it it, it it can't be attacked by anything because there's no file open against it our opponent doesn't have a light squared bishop and this knight you can see the configuration to our queen is like two diagonal squares away like well having one diagonal square between them which means it takes like four moves for the knight to be able to access that square geometrically so yeah this should be very nice bishop c7 looks like a nice move just improving the bishop because i don't want to take the d4 pawn at any point also prepares e5 potentially i'd kind of like to reroute this bishop like that which is typical in many uh, dutch defenses to reroute the bishop like this Ooh, not like that like this go to g6 or h5 sorry these arrows are horrific um knight g5 i don't really want to go for this bishop i need to develop so i'm just going to play bishop d7 get this rook in the game i want to go rook f8 bishop e8 and bishop to any of these squares really our bishop and pawn structure on the queen side is basically impenetrable because these defend each other and the b pawn protects c6 and nobody can access the undefended b7 pawn because the bishop cuts off the file so that's a very nice configuration to know it's a very common pawn structure and it's one that i use a lot and you can do the same thing with like this pawn on c7 and this pawn on a6. Okay, he attacks our knight. And if he has the opportunity to take it, he's going to ruin our kingside pawn structure. So rook f8 makes sense to me. So if takes, we take back with the rook. Knight e5 looks like a logical move. d4 is hanging, but... I don't really want to take it. We could play bishop takes in c5 because there's no pawns on the e or c file to take advantage of a rook d1 pin against the queen. So there is that. But... Hmm. It would, might be easier just to go bishop e8, bishop g6. Because we're up a piece, but our extra piece is our light squared bishop, and it's not playing the game. It's just sitting behind all the pawns currently. 
So, 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 bishop e8, bishop g6, and our extra piece is actually in the game. Which looks nice to me. Looks very nice. As long as e6 remains defended, we should be okay. Rook e5 attacks the queen, but that's just a one move threat. I think we can just go queen d6. In fact, that's the only safe square anyway, so e6 it is. His idea might be bishop f4, setting up some discoveries on the queen, but I think we have knight g4 attacking the rook and opening up our rook's attack on the bishop. So I think bishop f4 fails to knight g4. Bishop f4, knight g4, let me just see. There is knight g5 threatening mate on h7. So bishop f4, knight g4, knight g5. We might just have g6. Just stopping the mate attack. And then all of white's problems still remain. There is the move though, right? Bishop f4. Okay, no, I'm going to show you after the game. Um, <laughs> I need to make a quick note of it. Let me just make a quick note. Move 23. Queen d6, bishop f4. I want to cover that line afterwards. I've got a little whiteboard behind my computer. Because um, I think that might be a really cool line. But I f yeah, I don't know. It's a tough line to find, but it might have kind of worked. Our opponent defends the d4 pawn, which I mean is logical, sure. Um, You know what? Knight g4 might actually still be a move. Attacking the rook. Because if the rook moves to say e1. Knight g4, rook e1. Then we have rook takes f3. Removing the defender of g of um, h2. And if g takes f3, queen h2, king f1. Queen defends f2. But queen h1, king e2. If the rook goes to e1. I think this works. I think it does. And our opponent has no threat on h7, which is the which was the job of the knight. And he can't create a threat on h7 because the knight doesn't have access to g5. Critically. The bishop, again, can't come to f4 because our rook is now opened up and controls the f4 square, so we can just take it. And if he plays a move like knight to g5 then, then we can just go g6 or knight f6. Or even rook h6, which might be even better. Maintaining the attack on the rook and getting the rook on the h file. I hope you can follow me when I'm just saying random moves. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just kind of, kind of um, the way that I think. I often go down random rabbit holes. I don't know whether everyone does that or not, but I just like to check crazy variations just in case I've missed something. So that's not a bad move, because if rook f3, then he can take on g4. <laughs> e5 is potentially a move to open up defense of the knight, but then d takes and our queen is under attack by the rook. So I don't like that. If rook takes f3, rook takes g4. I don't know, I don't like that. What about h5 defending the knight pawn h5 
if he goes h3, we can take on f3. And again, if pawn takes, the queen gets into h2. And if he takes the knight after rook takes... Then we can drop back to f5. And as opposed to the rook being there, there will be a pawn there. So this bishop will actually be under attack. And then we can maybe play rook a to f8, getting on the f-file. This might weaken our king side, but I don't believe our opponent carries any threats. Again, we control the f4 square of our queen and our rook, so there's no bishop f4. And our threat of rook takes f3 is basically renewed. So yeah, h3. Rook f3, if gf3, then queen h2, king f1, queen h1, king e2. I don't even know if that works, actually. Um, huh. I don't know if that works. So if rook f3, can he just take the rook? Oh no, because then we take on h3, but it comes with check. And then after king e2, we have knight h2. I believe that's winning, so we're going to take. And I'm expecting him to take the knight. Critically, like I said, his queen defends f2, so it's not a forced mate if he takes the rook. But I think we get more than enough out of the exchange sacrifice. I hope the computer agrees with me, because I put a lot of faith into this move. There might be some weird computer defense, but that also relies on our opponent actually finding it. But yeah, I assumed he had to take that. But now we have... Oh, we don't have rook f5 like I planned. The pawn defends it. Ah, poor calculation. Oh well, we're up a piece still, so there's that. Got that going for us. Um, kind of annoying, he's going to take there, and he actually has an interesting attack. But we could just go rook f7. And here, we can just go rook af8. And, I mean, that looks pretty dangerous. If he goes for a move like bishop e3, that's very passive. Also locks this rook out of being able to retreat. If if he takes, and then we go rook a f8, he does have bishop h4 defending f2. So there's that. There is that. But then we have rook f4, offering a trade of rooks and attacking the pawn. Okay, it's an odd move. Let's continue with the plan. I don't want to take because it just activates his pieces. He might be trying to go king g2 and rook h1. That might be his idea. Oh, all that, all that, all that, all that. Now, we could actually sack the exchange. In fact, I think that's a great move. I think it's way simpler if we just sack the exchange, because his king side is ripped apart completely. And we have two bishops for a rook, which, I mean, it's, you know, pretty winning. Like, his king side is ruined. As long as we can get this bishop into the game, it spent the whole game stuck behind the e6 pawn. If I could get rid of that e6 pawn, just like literally make it disappear, I'd be a very happy man. But that's not how chess works. But here, we're going to be very annoying to our opponent. If he steps onto the h file, then we're going to take h5 with check. And if he steps onto the f file, that's a very weak king. 
I like the look of c5 opening up bishop b5 check which looks winning because if the king goes to e1 then we have bishop a5 check so let's do it let's do it our queen's cutting off a lot of squares for the king so that's very helpful obviously and the problem is we have the bishop pair and his king is completely open there's really no point taking this pawn his queen can't do anything because the queen has to defend the rook because our queen's putting pressure on it and his king is so vulnerable of course here we could play bishop takes d4 but that just opens up lines for white i'm sure we're still completely winning but c5 i think is way more clinical if he goes for a4 to stop bishop to b5 we can't take it because the queen still defends the rook but we could just take like that and the d file remains closed and our bishops control like all the infiltration squares on the c file yeah Bishop c6 might be an idea. Ooh, bishop c6. And then we can go bishop g2. And if king e1, we have the same idea of bishop to a5. That looks good. And I think, again, it's more clinical than taking. Yep, let's do it get the bishop into the game we don't have to worry about e6 because our queen defends it if we play queen g2 then the king can go to e1 but then bishop a5 the king has to come to e2 bishop f3 and then the king if it steps up we could just take the rook and be up a bishop. That's never a bad thing, being up a bishop and having your opponent's king in the center. But I think bishop g2 might be more clinical. I think. It's a bit tricky, for sure. But actually, if um, we go bishop g2... Oh, yeah, okay, okay, cool. So let's calculate. Bishop g2. King has to go to e1, otherwise we have discoveries if it steps onto the g-file. So, oh, come on, arrows. Arrows, please, 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 please. Oh, my God. You're just going to have to trust me that I've calculated this. You have to trust me. I would show you, but chess.com is not cooperating with me. By the way, if you stuck around this long in the video, then um, thank you. And um, you know that you want to drop a subscribe because there's no way you've stuck around for 40 minutes if you weren't enjoying. Okay, King E1, Bishop A5. Yep, we're covering everything, so he has to block. And here, if we take, again, we just, we're up a clean bishop. But we could go queen e4 and force a trade of queens. And then we're going to win this anyway. So it's just bishop versus nothing. But I think bishop e4 might be more clinical. No, bishop f3 with queen g1. Our opponent has no checks. This rook can't go to d8, which would be mate. And it wouldn't be mate, because our bishop covers it anyway. But the rook's pinned, so. I want to go bishop f3 and then go queen g1. And just trap the king in a box. I think that works. b4 isn't a move anyway. 
but I think queen g1 is unstoppable. If king f1, then we just go queen g2, king has to go back to e1, and then queen g1 will be mate. And yeah, the thing is, this bishop's cutting the king off from this side, and this king's cutting the king off from that side. The rook is glued to the king. White can't intercept it. I'm going to go queen c3, but this is mate anyway. I suppose he has queen d3. Because if queen g1, queen f1. But then we can take the rook on d2 with check. And the king is forced away from the defense of the queen. And then it's a queen and a bishop versus nothing. Which is easier to convert than a bishop versus nothing. Which was the simple approach. But why take simple when we can be accurate? It's good. To, yeah, he, 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 he does find the defense. And I don't think we have anything better. So let's just do it. Let's not faff around. Let's win a queen. Again, of course we could take the queen first and then take the rook and have two bishops for nothing. But, I mean, having a queen is better than having a bishop, right? I expect our opponent to resign now. Because this is the only move. And then we win the queen. So... Yeah, there we go. Opponent resigns. And let's analyze the game now. So, 82% accuracy. Not bad. Not bad. We won't del dwell even too much on the opening. Knight EG5. Yeah, that is a mistake. And the computer will be telling me to play H6. But Knight F7... You know, white has a lot of play because our light squares are so weak. So, again, like I said, the computer is going to tell me that I'm playing bad moves, but I don't care. And yeah, knight takes f7 here is nowhere near as good. If we play h6 in this position and then knight f7, the evaluation is about minus one, right? It's an inaccuracy. But because we don't play h6, it's now a blunder, and it's more like minus 2. Because, like I said, our h-pawn defends g6. So bishop c4. The computer likes rook e8, but knight g5, king g8. Oh, we have knight f8 winning the knight. I missed that. And if bishop takes... Rook takes, knight takes, queen e7, queen e2, knight f8. And he kind of has to trade the queens. So okay, this was also a possibility. Maybe made it easier. But knight b6 is still good. And like I said, I expected knight g5, which is the best move. Forcing the king really to go to e7 to keep an eye on the e-pawn. But bishop b3 just allows rook e8. Skip through this real quick. I explained why I put the knight there. Knight c7 is apparently a mistake. Well, hardly actually. Computer saying bishop c2, but c5, drop the bishop back, queen d3. And yeah, bishop takes c5 is now on the cards because of the pin. So bishop e3. Knight g5, and then, let's see, yeah, it likes knight cd5, so I'm happy I found that. Bishop c2, and then, yeah, h6 is a move, g6 is a move, but knight b4 is just the best. And we win the bishop, and the attack is gone. Queen d5 is the best move. Just centralizing the queen especially since it can't be attacked, is very unlikely to be a bad thing, right? So knight f3. Bishop d7, we're just developing. Bishop g5, rook f8, because we don't want to ruin the pawn structure. Draw the queen back. And here I was a little bit stumped, but 
Computer likes knight g4. Preferred knight d5, but... See, here we can take the knight, because like I said, we have this attack. But I thought we could just take the knight here, and it's very easy for him. But I guess we still have the same plan as before. So, I liked h5. And yeah, rook f3 is the best move. And if he takes the rook, then, ooh, then we infiltrate. And I assume we take on here. We have knight takes f2? And if king takes... Oh, we win the queen. Mm, very nice, very nice. But he doesn't go into that. Rook f7 is the best. And I was expecting him to take, and then I was going to double up. And bishop e3, and he'd be locking his rook out. So that was my plan. I right, move 20... Move 23. Oh, I need to go back. I need to go back. My thinking was bishop f4. And then... What was it? Knight g5. Queen h7. Whoa. So I didn't see this, because I thought bishop f4, knight g4 didn't work, but I did not see queen takes h7. What a move. What I was actually thinking was here, knight g5. Computer wants to be cold-blooded and allow the queen in. Okay. Well, I would never play this in a million years, because this looks terrifying. Apparently the king escapes to c7, but why allow this, right? Doesn't matter, because here it's no longer a move, because there is no uh, rook h5 with a discovery. So, anyway, yeah, he takes the knight, rook f7, and here it is actually best to take the bishop. So that is the best move. And the problem is, is king size is just way too exposed. Queen g4, king moves, c5, queen takes h5 is the best, but c5 is pretty much just as good, bishop c6 is now best, and yeah, here we are just winning, because he has to block, queen h5, you can actually play, because then you can put your queen on h1, but bishop f3, I think is very clinical, is queen g6 actually stopping queen g1? But, I mean, even if he finds this, this is just a very simple way to play. And we're always going to win this being a bishop up, right? So let's not delve into the specifics. Taking that's an inaccuracy. Keeping the queen on the board <laughs> to look for mate is actually better. Maybe to try and go from the other side. <laughs> But that's ludicrous. Uh, there's no need to do that when you can just win a queen. So that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed. And um, again, we're getting closer to 1900. We weren't able to win that many ELO this episode because our opponent was a fair bit lower rated. But he, he played well for his rating, to be fair. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one.